where now it's focusing on how to make fifteen and twenty thousand dollars a month. Hold up, wait. Before we get into this reaction, I want to let you guys know up front that this video is going to be a lot of good game on how to make fifteen thousand dollars or more in your own pressure washing business. For the sake of time, I'm going to make this reaction as short as possible because I want to be mindful for your time and it's YouTube and there's not a huge audience of people that'll watch. A terribly long video. So what I want to let you guys know up front is that after watching all of the game in this video that's consolidated for the sake of time, if you need more detailed help and you want access to somebody that will help you do this for yourself, there's a link down in the description to this gentleman's course. The course is already less than the cost of a new pair of J's, but since he's my fellow brother from the Carolinas, he's also provided a discount code for the Hustle fam. So if you want more help after you see and hear what you're about to hear about this business, click the link in the description, use discount code PRESSURE, and take advantage of the in-depth training if you want to create this business for yourself, put your friends on to create this business, Put your loved ones on to create this business. You just want to create this business and run it and have other people do the label for you. It's completely up to you. For those of you out there that may be interested in the pressure washing business, or maybe you weren't interested in the pressure washing business, but now that you've read the title of this video and know that somebody is making fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a month and willing to teach you you might be interested in getting into it now but without further ado appreciate all your love and support hit that thumbs up button share this video with anybody you think it can help and in this video we're going to learn how to start a six-figure pressure washing business what's up it's the shark damon john here and i want to shout out jt hustles Yo, yo, shout out to JT Hustles for teaching people how to become entrepreneurs on YouTube and all over social media. 2020 video is about, you know, six figures, a bigger business. I still don't have super fancy equipment. You know, I don't have $10,000 equipment, but I am running a six figure pressure washing business with pretty basic equipment. Nothing super, super fancy. Now, before we get started, let's look at a little of you. I have a stack of checks. Let's just look at some okay right here. Here's a check for six sixty five. This was like two hours worth of work. Whoa! Hold on, hold on, hold on. Six sixty five for two hours worth of work. We not just gonna gloss over that like that's nothing, right? Over three hundred dollars an hour was made at, at that point in time. Six sixty five and two hours at a single job. But let's keep it going. Three fifty. 305, okay. 360, 400. I'm assuming that these lower amounts got to be due to the fact that he was there less than two hours, right? If, if I follow the logic, but let's keep it going. 305, 360, 400, 390. I'm not going to go through all these checks. But you can see that money is being made. There's plenty of opportunity in pressure washing. Now, me specifically... I am only in residential. I do very little commercial work. Okay. So this video is pretty much a perspective of if I could start over from the beginning with the current knowledge I have right now, what would I do differently? Here is my exact blueprint of how I would do it if I was starting over right now. So if I was starting over right now, number one, what I would do is I would start off with a 4GP machine. The biggest thing about 4GP machine is okay, like that's the type of pressure washer. So. I would start off with a better machine. If you can't afford a 4 GP machine out of pocket, build up your personal credit score. I have at least a 700 or you know a 690, 680, something decent, right? So you have a good personal credit score. From there, I would take my personal credit leverage to start what is called business credit. And if you don't know about business credit, stick with me on this channel because I'll be talking more about it. But basically, business credit is separate from your personal. It doesn't affect your personal. And you get access to higher lines of credit. So my first business card that I ever got, I got approved for $9,000 of credit. Dope. 0% interest for 12 months. What is the beauty about that? So right now, you don't have a whole lot of money. If you have a good credit score, you can leverage that good credit score to start your business. You can access business credit, 0% financing for 12 months. You might not be able to go get approved for a loan for $9,000, but you can access business credit credit and use that business credit to purchase the equipment you need 
for your business. So you're able to start out with a 4 GPM machine. 4 GPM machine, and I got mine from Harbor Freight, cost about 800 bucks. So yeah, 800 bucks for a 4 GPM machine, right? So $800 pressure washer, uh, it'll be 4 GPM. You have reliability in your business, number one. You don't have to worry about it, not cranking up, stuff like that. Uh, another couple thousand dollars, maybe investing in a van or a truck. Find one for like 15 hundred two thousand dollars boom you're in twenty eight hundred dollars now you just need to buy a hose reel a couple extra hoses so as far as applying the chemical you can buy an x jet which will run you about a hundred bucks i actually recently got one i love it if not you can do the bottle method i talk about which is a foam applicator you can get one off of ebay for about 20 bucks or even 15 buy a couple of those you can downstream buy a downstream injector from uh northern tool for about 20 bucks and boom, you have your equipment. You would probably end all the way if you had to buy a whole vehicle. Now, if you have a vehicle with a trailer hitch, you can just buy a trailer so you're in only about 400 bucks instead of paying, you know, $2,000 for a new car. Oh, and last we talk about the difference between pressure washing and soft washing. So, pressure washing is a general term that's used. Most people don't know the word soft washing. Most customers definitely know about soft washing. Everybody just thinks I need my house pressure washed. I need this pressure wash. A lot of pressure washing really isn't even about pressure. It's about proper chemical. So we're not using a whole lot of pressure on most jobs. Honestly, most of the things I'm doing, I'm using about 500 to 1,000 PSI okay. when I'm cleaning certain things. Most of it comes down to S8, sodium hypochlorite, a.k.a. bleach. Now, percentage... Oh, I didn't know that. So I guess bleach is a commonly used uh, substance. I didn't know what they used in pressure washers. Uh, I might have, if I'm not mistaken, I might have heard somebody say before they was using just water. But I'm sure, you know, uh, not everybody uses just water, but it's cool that he highlights that. Wise, when it comes to bleach, you can find 6%, you can find 10%, you can find 12%. 12% is obviously your strongest, you know, solution of bleach. And that's what most of the pros are using. You want to know what I use? I use, honestly, I use whatever is the most convenient for me at the time. So sometimes I use 6%, 6% I'll admit that. But honestly, it works that's really dope. effectively for me. And I don't have a that's a nugget right there, man. He making that kind of money. And he let you know he using whatever's most convenient for him at the time. So people probably go, I'm probably gonna get some, you know, some flack for that about using six percent bleach. I use it sometimes. It is very effective. It works for me. It gets the job done. Now, if you're doing roof washing, which I'll talk about maybe a little bit, you probably want to use twelve percent bleach. You want to use the strongest solution you can because roof washing requires a stronger solution of bleach. So you want to use SH. That's what's used in most jobs when you're cleaning. You know, whether it's brick whether it's vinyl siding or stucco, SH is your go-to chemical. Now from there, there are some other chemicals that you may need to do specific jobs. Um, I'm not gonna get too much into detail on that. So pretty much most thing you'll need is a surfactant and SH, the hypochlorite, AKA bleach to clean. Now, so pressure washing is obviously pressure, high pressure is being used. Now for most of the work you'll be doing, like I said, you'll be using, you'll be pretty much doing soft washing. Soft washing really, now there is, soft washing is, a term for how to clean but it's also a machine specifically you can buy you can buy a soft wash machine which is its own unit and basically the difference between a pressure washer and a soft washer is first of all um, soft washers do not obviously have high pressure so the pressure on a soft wash machine is going to be very low like 100 200 psi 300 psi very soft but you're going to have probably about five four five and I want up GPM, so a lot of people use 8 GPM for the higher, bigger guys. For currently right now, I, I want to pause here and like, yo, hey, as always, link to his channel is down in the description below. I like how he's very uh, technical, very analytical. These are the sort of people you want to learn from, the people that speak the language of the business, and they can explain it in a simple way so that you can understand, right? Go show his YouTube channel some love. Let them know JT Hustle sent you, but let's keep it going and get this lesson. The soft wash machine is about 4 GPM, which I'll probably upgrade the pump soon. But anyway, a soft wash machine, I pretty much call it like a pump sprayer on steroids. It's, uh, it uses an electric pump. Bleach is pulled straight from a batch tank and is applied. So there's no, with a pressure washer, you have, you're constantly having water injected. So a pressure washer is pulling water from the water outlet through the pressure washer and it's constantly, you know, you have a constant source of water. A soft wash machine, you make up your batch, it might be a 50, 50, 50% 50 bleach, 50% water. And whatever's in that tank is what you're using. That's what you're spraying onto the house or whatever you're doing. So most of pressure washing and cleaning is pretty much just applicating, rinsing and repeating. 
that's pretty much the main process of pressure washing in this application. Sounds straightforward enough. Knowing the right chemical to use, letting it dwell for a little bit so you know it can kill the mold and mildew, and then coming back through and rinsing it. So within that, it might sound really simple, but you can make some mistakes. Like within, you know, your equipment, if you don't know these things about the difference between soft washing and pressure washing, you might use a soft wash, I mean you might use a pressure washer when you should be soft washing. And when I say soft washing, I don't specifically mean a soft washing machine. I just mean using less pressure and using the proper amount of chemical. I've seen guys who are cleaning two-story homes and they're having to climb on ladders, they blast and pressure against the siding. Uh, number one, it's inefficient. Number two, it's dangerous for the homeowner, I mean for the house, because you could potentially damage the siding by using a high pressure. And third, you're not doing an effective job because if you're just using water and having to climb ladders, you're not really killing the moldy mildew. You're just taking off the surface of it and it'll be back within a matter of probably a month, 30 days. Because if you don't kill it, it's going to go right back. Okay. Alright. So that is another nugget. You know what I mean? Like I said, I might have heard somebody say that they was using just water. But, yo, that that he just touched on, the reason why you're using chemicals is so that you're not just getting it off of the surface. You're actually solving the problem, right? And I'm sure that by solving the problem and it's not coming right back, that's going to increase uh, your referral rate and the willingness of that man or woman to call you if and when there is another problem that you could solve. So you want to know these things. If you don't, if you don't know these things, you could end up damaging someone's home, and that's another issue in itself. You know that you could be dealing with, especially if you don't have insurance. So you want to know those things. You know it's a certain knowledge base you want to have coming into pressure washing. Like something I didn't know when I first started was uh, the orifice size of nozzles are different. This right here. Let's say this is the orifice of the nozzle. This is where the water is coming out the end. So obviously this would be like a wide orifice nozzle, right? The wider the orifice of the nozzle the lower the pressure will be. So, for example, if you have your pressure washer on, say you're running 4,000 PSI and you put like a red nozzle on, you're getting 4,000 PSI, which you should just throw away the red nozzle. If you have it, <laughs> anyway, never use that at all. But anyway, the smaller the orifice, so if this circle was closed and smaller, which most nozzles obviously, this isn't even a nozzle, just using it as an example, or a lot smaller than this, that hole that the water comes out of, you want to look for a wider orifice nozzle because those control um, the pressure at the end of the tip. If you're using too much of a strong blast, you can end up leaving those zigzag marks. It looks like almost graffiti people's sidings, and it looks mm -hmm. absolutely terrible. So, to get more of a soft wash um, experience with your pressure washer, you want to lower the pressure on your pressure washer. You want to use a higher GPM, like at least 4 GPM, and you want to use a wider orifice nozzle that way you have, you're having more volume of water versus more pressure. Because that's what we're going for in pressure washing is volume of water and not high pressure for most of the jobs we do. Most of the jobs we do, like I said, we don't use high pressure. So that's the biggest difference between pressure washing and soft washing, something you want to know. So when it comes to applicating, a chem, applicating the chemical, the bleach, on two siding or whatever you're cleaning, whatever surface you're cleaning, here are some different ways to do it. You can do what's called X-jetting. Which exjetting is applying chemical, the chemical pulls basically at the end of the wine. You attach a little nozzle that has a tube attached to a bucket that pulls bleach, right? And that comes at the very end of the wine. That's exjetting. There's also the foam applicator method, which is basically like a mini version of exjetting, except it's just a little bottle, same, pretty much same tool, little uh, tube, but the bottle is connected and it's very, it's a lot smaller. I use that method for the past four years, and honestly, I still use it for certain jobs. I have an X jet now. Honestly, I love it. It's beautiful. So that's two ways: foam applicator, X jet. Third way you can apply chemical is called downstreaming. This the chemical is still pulled after the pump, but it's pulled before the wine. So basically, after the pump, where you would plug in your water, your your pressure washing hose to the pressure washer, you would put a downstream injector in between those two things, and the bleach would pull pretty much at that source right there. And you pull up bleach at a low amount, at a low pressure. So you could, you have to turn the pressure washer down to a very low amount to be able to pull uh, that bleach through there um, with uh, downstreaming. So that's three different ways. And the fourth way would be if you have a, uh, if you have a soft wash machine, you can apply the chemical that way. So that's four ways you can apply the chemical to your surfaces when it comes to pressure washing. So we talked about getting your equipment, you know, we talked about the chemical that you need to start, four ways to apply chemicals for, to be able to clean from the ground. 
um, you know, and not having to climb all those ladders like a lot of people do. I still recommend having a ladder because sometimes you need, there's awkward angles, stuff like that. And if you get in the roof washing, you'll definitely need a ladder. So, I know this video is very jumpy. Stick with me. I don't script anything. Next. Now, nah, this is a lot of good game. Apply the chemical, you know, with Smash that thumbs, thumbs up button if you haven't done so already. This is the most important part, or like the, one of the most important parts about pressure washing. That is getting clients. And that's where most people suffer is how to actually market their business. Thanks. How do I recommend them? This, like I said, this is taking the knowledge I have now and starting over. What would I do? What would I put my energy to into my money into? I would invest in postcards and I can share with you guys my design. I don't have one right now on me, but I use postcards um, that I pass out while, well, I don't personally pass them out. I have somebody who passes them out while I'm doing a house or while I'm working. They get passed out to the neighbors. Even on days off, I would okay. take time to go to neighborhoods and pass out you know, postcards in every mailbox. Yo, I want to pause here and highlight this. He's the first person so far on this channel that has talked about offline marketing. I'm sure he's going to talk about what he does online as well, but lots of time you hear people only talk about what they do online. I'm telling you this as somebody that loves online marketing. However, I do recognize that there's a value there and I appreciate him for being transparent and being willing to share uh, how he's marketing a business that's making him fifteen to $20,000 a month because you got to understand that there's not a lot of people out that would teach you this game. That's a great way to get some business um, if you want to put that groundwork in. Number two, which has been my number one source of marketing, is Facebook ads. There it goes. Has been the online marketing. It has been the number one uh, marketing source I've used to grow my business. I've tried Google. So you're doing a combination of offline and online marketing. Dope. Yes, and I probably will even try it again this year, but Facebook is, I, I just, I don't even know what to say. Like Facebook literally makes me thousands and thousands of dollars. Most of my leads, I get a daily leads from Facebook, quality leads. Most of these people book with me. So Facebook ads, I would highly, highly recommend. And it'll, you can start Facebook ads for just $5 a day. So Facebook ads is my number one recommendation for getting clients and pressure washing. Build up reviews for your business, so ask for those re reviews. Do quality work, ask for reviews, great way. If you have reviews, that's a big thing that will help your Facebook page. because people can Or any them. business, yeah, you need those reviews. You versus just taking your word for it, you can be like, hey, don't take my word for it, check out my review page. So I've done a huge focus on asking people for reviews after every job I do because that's how you grow your business. You want word of mouth, all right? So we talked about what? Postcards, flyers, uh, Facebook ads. Another thing uh, that is very controversial for some reason that people either love it or they hate it is Home Advisor. So when I first started, they got me. Uh, this was years ago. I signed up for Home Advisor. You know, I bit the bullet, paid the money, it's not a fee or whatever. And honestly, I can't say it was a waste of money. It actually made me a decent amount of money. I just was thinking too small back then. So my biggest advice for Home Advisor, if you do sign up for it, because it's not really a scam, if you know how to effectively use it. Here's my thing. Here's the key. Call as soon as they send you the lead. As soon as Home Advisor sends you a lead, call the customer immediately. Be the first one to go give a quote. And normally, like I can say, I probably made, yeah, I definitely made thousands of dollars off of using Home Advisor. And uh, some people are afraid of like, yeah, oh, you get like, you know, spam or they give you like fake leads. If you ever get a bad lead, you, you don't even get to talk to the customer and they'll refund you the money. So, uh, you know, I recommend doing it. It's an initial sign up fee of like 300 bucks. <laughs> and uh, you pay for leads after that. Leads cost anywhere between like 15 to like 30 bucks, depending on the zip code, whatever. But Home Advisor can definitely be a great source to um, get your business off the ground. Those leads are going to be, like I said, a little bit higher cost, but just build that back into your price. I've been able to, you know, make a lot of money by just referrals, postcards, and Facebook. But this year we're trying to scale, so we're going to be, you know, doing yard signs, postcards, Facebook ads, spending at least probably at least a thousand dollars or more a month on Facebook, spending money on Home Advisor, and there's even a way for me to um, do some advertising on my local news channel. So let me push that. I'm going to be doing. Okay. What I also like about his presentation and giving this game, on top of him being obviously very knowledgeable about the business and be and being willing to share what he knows, is that he's telling y'all the real. You know what I mean? It's a lot of people 
on YouTube and even some of the content that I've made in the past. I'm going to even put myself out there. There are ways that you can make money with a small investment and then build it up over time to be something significant. It does take a while and it does take a significant amount of hustle. And there's nothing wrong with spending a thousand dollars or more a month in Facebook ads if it's generating you fifteen to twenty thousand dollars of revenue per month, right? You gotta pay to play in business. No way around it. So I appreciate him being transparent and not saying, you know, uh, I'm only spending a uh, dollar a month and I'm generating this amount of money because I'm all about practical entrepreneurship. I'm all about being as transparent with you guys as humanly possible, letting you know, yo, this is the game, whether it's my own individual content and I like to bring people on this channel like him that's going to give you the real. Marketing. Those are some ways to get clients initially. I would not recommend your first job to be a paid job. That's another nugget. Well, let me see. Let me see his train of thought first before I interject. Because you don't, you know, you don't want to. Your first job to be a paid job. You don't know what you're doing, and you mess someone's house up. And if absolutely, absolutely, I know people clicked on this video because the amount of money that he's making. But yeah, if you don't know what you're doing and you're trying to learn the business, yeah, you don't want to go mess up somebody's house, not knowing what you're doing, right? whether they paying you or not. So definitely, if you new and you gotta get some experience, maybe you gotta do your house, your mom's house, your grandma house, your girl house, or uh, whoever house, uh, the church building, whatever it is, uh, to get some experience up, get some pictures, get some testimonies, get your confidence and experience up, um, and then you go out and start charging people, right? And you, if it's free, you still wanna mess it up because it's still a liability, but, at least it's free, so they can't be like, I want my money back. Yeah. And that leads me to the next point is get insurance. Just in case anything does go wrong. And most people are going to ask, like, are you insured and blah, 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 blah. Cover your tail, have insurance. We're now focusing on how to make fifteen and $20,000 a month. Because that's where I'm at right now. I'm at, you know, the 15K mark and the goals at the 20K about it, roof washing. So this year is a pretty, you know, it's going to be a pretty big year. And, you know, I want to have a good year, but I want to have a good year with other people, too. So, you know, I want you guys, you business owners, have a good year as well. And I want to, you know, play a part in that and to help you get there because, you know, it's going to be a lot faster for you to get to that goal and that number if you can learn from somebody who's already at that level versus having to do it yourself. Because it took me, you know, three, year, three and a half years to get to that point when it could have got there a lot faster had I had a bigger mindset and had I had this knowledge for so long, you know, I'm doing things my own way and not really learning as fast as I should have. So if I could have started with the training I have now, if I could have run my own training three and a half years ago, I would be a lot further along than I am right now. But you're always welcome to learn the hard way, continue to dig through YouTube, find a bunch of videos and learn that way. And I wish you the best of luck. But for those of you who want to skip that, take the shorter path and get straight to it, you know, go ahead and roll the training. I'll leave the link below. Much love to you guys and good luck with your businesses. Peace out. All right, you guys, as always, be sure to follow him, show him some love. Don't forget that there's a link down in the description for his training. Use discount code PRESSURE to get your discount, right? Like I said, it's my fellow brother from the Carolinas, so he was willing to show love, give you guys a discount on the training. The training is already less than the cost of a new pair of J's, but he's still going to give you all a discount because he's a solid dude. So use discount code PRESSURE and get your discount on the training if you want more training and access to him to help grow your business to make six figures a year like you like you heard him say he making 15 bands a month and climbing until next time so i'm a hustler stay hustling jt hustles i'm gone